The new album from Liam Gallagher and John Squire is finally here, and it's an amazing Brit Rock team up of epic proportions. Just another rainbow hanging over me. Raise your hands, I can see you. Thank you for your thoughts and prayers, and fuck you too. But is the new album more about the vibe and less about the songs? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's Nick here with you. Welcome back to the Ross Squad channel. So it's finally here, the new collaborative album. We're not calling it a super group here, people. Uh, from Oasis's Liam Gallagher and the Stone Roses and Seahorse's John Squire. Raise your hands. And us Brit Rock fans have been practically salivating at the thought of this team up and this album's release. Mm, Brit Rock Brit music. Rock. Oh. I feel like I'm doing my best Homer Simpson here. And I think for the most part, this album is a success. I think it's a, exactly what you would expect an album from Liam Gallagher and John Squire uh, to sound like. And mixing together the best of Oasis, the Stone Roses with some Beatles and other 60s rock and blues influences thrown in. But as epic as this team up is, and as much as I as I love the, the people involved with this album, I think for the most part, this album is more about the vibe and less about the songwriting. I know. I know, I know. I'm mad at myself too. I live for this shit. What is wrong with me? To me, as solid as this album is, it doesn't really live up to Liam Gallagher's solo material or Noel Gallagher's solo material. But this is a really well produced and performed record. Liam Gallagher sounds great, of course. He's always been a little bit hit and miss when it comes to seeing him live, but in the studio, Liam Gallagher always kills it. And you're combining that iconic voice with an amazing talent like John Squire, who other than Noel Gallagher himself is probably the most ideal collaborator for Liam Gallagher. But as great as John John Squire is, and I keep saying but in this review, I know, as great as John Squire is, I've never really rated him that high as a songwriter. He wrote every song on this record. Liam didn't do any of the writing. John Squire did all the writing on this record, and the results can sometimes be mixed. To be fair, I'm not a huge Stone Roses guy. I've never listened to a ton of Stone Roses. I know they were a big influence on Oasis. I know the big Stone Roses songs, but for me, as a John Squire fan, I've always been a fan of that, uh, that debut Seahorses record from 1997, which was majority written by uh, John Squire and Chris Helm. But I think on that record, I actually enjoyed Chris Helm's songs more than John Squire's songs. And we got a taste of the future on that record because on that debut Seahorses album, there's a song called Love Me and Leave Me, which was co-written by John Squire and Liam Gallagher. And although I think this album wasn't as strong as I hoped it would be, it did have some great moments that I really want to talk about. So let's break it all down and go track by track. The first song on the record is called Raise Your Hands and it comes out of the gate on this album with a great opening track. You need to have a great track to kick off any album and they did it with this one. It's got some positive, uplifting lyrics, which is one of the reasons why I love music made by any of the Gallaghers, Liam Gallagher, Noel Gallagher, is that uh, the music is always positive and uplifting, and that's a continuing trend through their music, from Oasis, through their solo stuff, so really, really love that. It's always been a component of the Gallagher's music that I've loved. Raise your hands, I can see you. we're alive, raise your hands. And of course, it's got some crazy good vocals from Liam, a super catchy chorus, which I really loved. Uh, John Squire digging in there with some, some fuzzed out guitar. His tones in general on this album are really great. And of course, he provides a killer solo on this song. I love the piano on this. I love the, the really fun kind of pulsing beat on this. And you know what? For better or worse, but for me, for better, it sounds like... Oasis. And then we get to the second single that was released in the record called Mars to Liverpool. I love the sunny vibe of this song. I love the lyrics of the chorus. Here comes that feeling. Here it comes again. Here comes that feeling. Here it comes again. I'm waiting for the storm to run out of rain. I'm just waiting for summer to come so I can listen to this track uh, in the sunshine. That's just the picture that comes into my head. I picture like a, a field, a very sunny field on a sunny day, very hippie-ish uh, on this track. I love the bass on this track, very Paul McCartney-ish. A lot of Beatles flourishes happening on this record. And actually this song, kind of a random uh, connection for me, but it reminds me of the song Fire Escape by the band Fastball, especially the, the bass and the, the coda of this track. Jesus Christ, about last night I can Over. Never my mind. Then 
we get to the third track, which is called One Day at a Time. I have to be honest, didn't really dig this track. I think it's one of the weakest tracks on the record. It's only the third track in, and it's already filler, which was a little bit alarming to me because most albums, when you listen to, at least when I'm reviewing track uh, albums for this channel, they tend to be a little bit front loaded. To me, the melody was plotting. It wasn't really catchy, wasn't a lot to dig into. Definitely not one of the stronger melodies on the record. It may grow on me because this is my first listen, so I may listen to it more in the future and it may grow on me, but didn't really love it on the first listen, uh, but had some good lyrics on here, including one of the best lyrics on the, on the album, you should have fucked me when you had the chance. I did dig the, uh, the acoustic -y country and Western style intro from John Squire on this track though. That was pretty cool. Then we get to a song called I'm a wheel. All right. They went full on blues on this track. They went full on muddy waters, full on BB King. And I dig it. This isn't happening. Lock all the doors. We've never really heard Liam sing the blues. We've heard him do bluesy kind of stuff, but never this close to the actual blues. Aside from doing some some 12 bar blues stuff like Shaker Maker, Oasis to me wasn't really a bluesy kind of band. They didn't really seem to be influenced by the blues, but John Squire, of course, can handle this type of thing. He's well versed in the blues style and can always kill a blues solo. And there's another great lyric on here. These are the droids you're looking for. You know you're going after my heart when you mix Oasis, Liam Gallagher, and Star Wars. And then it breaks from that blues verse into a more traditional Brit rock chorus, which is super catchy. And after a lackluster third track, I'm glad I'm a Wheel came up because it reinstated my faith in this album. I'm a wheel, keep turning, fire, keep burning. Then we get to the first single release from this record, Just Another Rainbow. As I said in my review of the track, which I'll link up to you here, um, this is exactly what you would expect from a lead-off single and a song from Liam Gallagher and John Squire. I, I might have known this would be just another rainbow. To me, Just Another Rainbow is the perfect mix of Oasis and the Stone Roses. I love the fuzzy guitar on here. Again, a shout out to John Squire's tones on this record. Very, very 60s, very, very revolver. Really, really dig that. Uh, I love his extended solo on this song. I love Liam's psychedelic vocals. Uh, I think they're perfect for this track. And I think this is the perfect intro, the perfect introduction to this collaboration between these two uh, legendary British rock musicians. Just another rainbow. Hey. Just another rainbow dripping on my tree. Then we got to a song called Love You Forever, which sounded like a mix of Cream meets Jimi Hendrix. I love a good psychedelic love song. It's not super cheesy, not super emotional. Uh, very much another 60s kind of vibe happening here. Uh, not really one of my favorite tracks on the record. It felt a little bit more like filler to me than some of the other essential tracks on this record. Uh, but I love how it has more of a Hendrix uh, style breakdown at the end. Has a cool vibe vibe like a lot of some of, the, some of the other songs on this record a cool vibe but not really a great song then we get to one of my favorite tracks on the record which is make it up as you go along which was like a nice little fuck you diddy another great lyric on this record i'll have to hand it to john squire he does have some great moments lyrically on this record that liam gets to sing and this one he says thank you for the thoughts and prayers and fuck you too man liam gallagher and john squire sound pissed thank you for your thoughts and prayers and fuck you too also, another cool lyric on this song, no one knows any better than you. You know, we're all just figuring it out in this life. We're all winging it. We we don't know what we're doing. Make it up as you go along. A nice sentiment to remind us that we're all winging it in this life. It was a fun little tune, nothing really substantial, but a nice little middle of the album track. Then we get to a song called You're Not the Only One, which had another bluesy 12 bar blues kind of chord progression. You know, there aren't as many out and out rock and roll moments uh, on this record, it's more of a psychedelic kind of trippy kind of thing for the majority of the track list, but I felt that this is one of the more rock and roll driven tracks on the record with, of course, some great guitar from John Squire. This one in particular was less psychedelic. It was more rock and roll. I love the piano on this track. Reminds me of the BDI song, uh, Bring the Light, which was another great uh, track that Liam Gallagher wrote uh, back in the day. I love the lyric, you're not the only one who feels like this. It's like we're getting validation from Liam Gallagher and John Squire, you know? She says, don't worry. You're not the only one who feels like this 
funny because this album lyrically, it's funny because lyrically this album is a mix of a sunshiny positivity and a fuck you attitude, which I guess is pretty much the story of every Liam Gallagher and Oasis release since forever, which is why we love them. That's exactly why I love Oasis. And then there's a little bit of a Beatles reference happening in there as well. Something in the way that lyric reminds me, of course, of something by George Harrison and the Beatles. As we get to the end of the album, unfortunately, I didn't really dig some of the last couple of songs. I'm so bored. Uh, felt like another filler track for me. Did not really dig this track. Uh, felt like a typical end of the album kind of song. The melody wasn't great, but I did love the Beatles-esque guitar intro. It's one of the longer tracks on the record as well, but for me, the song wasn't strong enough to warrant that kind of track length. I dig the lyrics, bored of everything. We've all felt like that, but overall, this song left me kind of bored, and I felt it was one of the weakest songs on this debut album. Then we end the record with Mother Nature's Song, and I have to admit, I was a little bit hyped up for this song. I thought it was going to be one of the better songs on the record, but it really didn't impress me all that much. It was a softer ending to the album. I do think I have to listen to it a little bit more, but Liam called this, and I think in an interview, he called it one of the more emotional tunes on the record, and although it does have a nice vibe, I was expecting a little bit more from this song. And it's got that Beatles reference in there too. Instead of Mother Nature's Son, it's Mother Nature's Song. You get it? But you know what? Liam's voice and John Squire's guitar are great on this, as they are on every track on this album. So even though it wasn't the strongest track, they still sound great. Overall, with this new album from Liam Gallagher and John Squire, I sometimes felt that the album was more about the vibe and less about the songs. And don't get me wrong. It's a great vibe. Some sunny, bright, sunshiny, psychedelic, tinged rock songs with Liam Gallagher on vocals, John Squire on guitar. It doesn't get much, much cooler than that. And as with a lot of the albums that I review on this channel, I can picture myself getting into this more of course I'm going to listen to it a ton I can picture myself listening to it more and getting into it more and more uh, as I listen to it. And Liam Gallagher's solo material may be stronger, but he works with uh, some different producers, he works with different songwriters, and this uh, this album doesn't have that, so maybe it doesn't have quite the polished vibe of some of uh, Liam Gallagher's solo records. And obviously Noel Gallagher is a songwriting legend, it's hard to live up to some of his material, even his most recent solo material is beyond solid. And the thing is, I don't have a huge sample size of John Squire's songwriting, like I said, I've listened to the Stone Roses hits, but I've never really dug into full Stone Roses records, uh, I love the seahorses stuff, but for me, John Squire is stronger as a guitar player and maybe not as much as a songwriter. This new album is a fun listen overall, but it's not as strong as Liam and Noel's solo material. Uh, there's plenty of nods to their influences, very Oasis, Stone Roses, and Beatles. And uh, the guitar tracks in general, the guitar tone in general, is very a uh, revolver with a lot of different 60s influences thrown in. And there are some great collaborators on here as well. Liam has once again teamed up with producer. Greg Kirsten, who has produced, I think, all three of his solo records. And then Greg Kirsten has worked with a lot of big artists as well, uh, including Foo Fighters. He's worked on the last few records with them. And I think he's one of the best producers out there. And you can tell that he's he puts his, his heart and soul into every record that he produces and plays instruments on. Then you have Joey uh, Warrenker. I hope I said that right, on drums. He's a veteran drummer who has played on a lot of great records. And uh, I think he just he gives the songs just the right vibe. These aren't really flashy songs when it comes to uh, the drums, but very similar to Ringo Starr, he gives the songs what they need. He plays the drums for the songs, uh, and they're not super flashy, but I think there are some really cool things happening here instrumentally as well. And I do think this is a really good record, but on first listen, uh, I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. I thought it would be like a home run on that first listen, but it didn't really get there for me. I gotta keep listening to it. It's gonna get a lot of play in the car, so don't worry about that. Uh, definitely gonna be listening to it a lot, but overall, it left me a little bit underwhelmed. I know, I know, I'm, I'm mad at myself for not considering it a home run, uh, but you know what, that happens sometimes. Overall. I think this is a strong record from Liam Gallagher and John Squire. It didn't blow me away as much as I hoped it would, uh, but it's solid. I think I have to give it more of a chance. I have a hard time doing a review where I say I don't love something Oasis related, but I'm going to give the new album from Liam Gallagher and John Squire I'm going to give it a three out of five. I'm giving an Oasis related release a three out of five on this channel. What the hell is wrong with me? I know, guys. I'm going to have to reevaluate my musical priorities uh, based on the fact that this album didn't blow me away and I didn't immediately love it as much as I thought I would. But let me know what you thought of the new album from Liam Gallagher and John Squire in the comments below. Uh, if you like this review, make sure to toss us a like. If you like this channel and what we're doing here on the channel, make sure to subscribe uh, to the Rock Squad channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And follow us on social media, on Instagram and TikTok 
at Rock Squad Pod. And I'll see you guys again for another rock album review here on the channel. Until then, rock on, everybody. Mm-hmm.